Hey everyone, Pinchy Al here, and we're here with the Patreon car. So today we're going to be showing you guys how to put in a short shifter in cabin, and we're going to show you guys how to pull out the actually the O2J shift linkage out from the, uh, the car. So let's get to work because this is Pinchy Al's car. So to start your process in this DIY, you need to pull out the beginning portions of your shift, uh, shifter system, and that is unbolting the linkage here. Um, this is kind of a really bad example, but <laughs> we're going to show you anyways. Uh, right here, uh, you'll see the three bolts here. This holds your shift linkage. Uh, you're going to have the two parts here that um, pretty much... Uh, hold the shifter um, linkage in place to for you to for your selector. So you got to unbolt that. Those three. Uh, mine are already down there by down below. If you guys can see down there, um, and you see they're right, right down there too. Okay. So once you've done that, the next step is to go into the cabin and remove your center console. So the center console removal is pretty straightforward. We don't have an interior, so it's even easier for us. Um, number one, uh, you're gonna wanna take out the back uh, cover with the ashtray. Uh, there's two Torxes right here, okay? Uh, those two have to be unbolted, so that allows you to shimmy this back and forth and get it out. Uh, the next step will be to pull out your ashtray. Uh, take the uh, leather boot off of here and then we're gonna unbolt this portion of the center console all this will come out and then it'll give us full access to the actual um, actual shifter box here down below so we're gonna be taking off the rear exhaust these are kind of the tools I'm gonna be using so let's go down below and I'll show you guys what to do Dun, 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 dun. All right, so you get a good camera angle. Now, for the exhaust removal, you need to remove these two bolts here. Uh, they are a 17 millimeter. Sometimes if the if you had exhaust work done, it might be different. But there's that. If they're super rusty like mine, get yourself a handy dandy hammer. Whack them out. Like that. Now for me, I don't need the exhaust system in this car anymore. We're going to go full aftermarket, so I'm not caring for much of any type of damage I'm going to be creating. But for you guys, it might be a different story. Um, ugh, turn that down. So what I mean by a different story, um, you might have a different style of exhaust if you have an aftermarket. Um, but just keep in mind that this part right here has to come out uh, or move out of the way so you can drop the actual shift box and pull it out. Next step from here is that you're going to pry open this guy right here. And this, what it's going to allow you to do is to spread the, uh, the sleeve for the exhaust open. Once you do that, you can get a hammer 
and kind of hit it over. Sometimes they're not super friendly and you definitely have to put a little bit more effort into it. So that drops the exhaust like that. So the next step is, you'll see these little little uh, round things right here. Um, they're kind of like a pressing like nut almost, but you have to be super careful because they're super soft, uh, especially the aluminum that's in here that holds them in place. It's a very soft aluminum, so it's easily damaged. So, I always try to take my uh, time on these whenever we pop these out because they're easily pretty much broken. I mean, you can break them super quick. Um, these little uh, pressing locks here are kind of funky to pop out. So, you got to find a little spot where you can like kind of like turn it like a nut. See if I have a better uh, screwdriver. What one thing you don't want to do is kind of press it out or like pull it out because it does tend to damage it a little bit. You can give it a little bend, a little shimmy to help it out, but don't. Um, you don't want it to bend the little uh, forks here that uh, hold it in place because uh, these thread out. You just gotta take your time and get it to thread out. I bring a couple different tools with me to see if I can get it to. There we go. So, a nice set of needle nose pliers works really well. And you have four of these to remove. These guys right here. Eventually once they get really loose, you can pretty much thread them off by hand and that will pretty much break loose this cover here now we're only doing the uh the two back ones we don't need the rest of this guy back here what we need is the front ones because this whole entire cover has to come out to get to the shift box now a lot of people don't like doing this job it's a big job there are other corners you can cut to not do it this way i am not going to show you guys that i'm showing you guys the the right way of doing this all right that's these two right here this one this one and that corner and this corner will have to be the ones you have to remove so now we're going to do the front two covers um this might be a good time to pull out your o2 sensors if you need to service them um since they're like easily accessible right here if not, you just got to do this guy and the other one over there. Make sure you um, remove all the wiring for your O2 sensor here so it doesn't come down with it. So it doesn't really damage or harm anything that's in the way. All right, now that we got the cover pretty much all um, 
removed. What we need to do is you're gonna have to pull this shield down at the same time without damaging everything. Take your time prying off the shield from the front and then what you're gonna do is kind of get this guy to come out. I don't know what that is. Um, you're gonna slide it um, back like forward towards the front of the car because what you're trying to do is get it out of this little slot here now you don't want to prevent it from bending or caving in because you'll end up ruining the entire shield is in the way. Let's see. Get a little bend here. There we go. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Alright. Now, this exposes pretty much our shift box. Now, there's two bolts back here. They're 13s. And there's two um, inside the cabin. Now, you can unbolt these two right now. Uh, you'll see them pretty quick. Let's see if you guys can get a good view of it. There they are. There's two 13s right here. You want to take those off. Um, I wouldn't take them off 100% of the way. That way it just drops slightly. Take the ones on top off completely. It's going to drop the whole box. And then that way we're going to be able to pull the whole, whole uh, shift linkage all the way out from here. Okay? So now we're in the cabin. And in the cabin... We gotta figure out how to remove the same entire center console. So we're gonna show you guys how to remove the back console and then the front of the console. Uh, the back is probably the easiest. Uh, since we don't have an armrest, we don't have to worry much about that part. Sorry about that guys, don't can't show you how to do that. But um, if you do have an armrest and you wanna remove it, pull the armrest all the straight up. There's a cover that goes on here and there's a bolt right here that holds the armrest in place. Unbolt it and the whole armrest comes out. Next step, is these two torxes right here. I think they're T20 or T25, not 100% sure. Uh, this inner console is destroyed, so um, we're not gonna bother with it very much. I don't wanna rip it out. I'm not a monster, but I do wanna be safe. And I'm not caring very much on the condition of it. But so we took these two out. Uh, there are two more here and here but they don't have them on this car um, they're missing so that will allow us to pull the center console up like this pull your handbrake up and over and out super super easy to remove um, we remove the uh, center, the rear center console, primarily so we can get the front one off safely without damaging it. So let's show you what to do next. So your next step here is to remove the boot, ashtray, and then the rest of the center console. To get the boot ready for removal, pretty much, I believe you put yeah, pull on this side, and pull straight up. So that gives you access for the the little foam that's in here. Um, 
if you don't want to remove the entire center console you don't have to just remove this uh, foam insert and then it'll give you access to the two bolts to remove the entire center console but again we're going to not be using the center console anymore we're going to be designing our own so we're not going to keep this in here but for you guys i'm just going to show you guys this foam comes out just be safe and not rip it because you need it it's a it's a insulation it keeps a lot of the noise out of the car for you and then there's the bolts down below Is that pull this guy out and you'll see right there the two 13s that are needed to remove the rest of the shift box so the next step we have here uh, is to remove the ashtray so slide your ashtray cover back pull this guy the little cup out and then there's a torx right down below you're gonna take that guy out. We're gonna pull up and out. Slide your door cover now. Flip up down, upside down. Pull the cigarette lighter wiring out. Kind of hard to do it with one hand. <laughs> All right, give me a second. So now that the cigarette lighter is uh, cigarette ashtray is removed, um, next step is to pull out your center console here. Oh man, this guy's got some another ash cigarette lighter over here. Okay, so. I'm going to pull up. The boot goes sideways and out. Just like that. So this here gives us all the exposure we need now for removing pretty much the shift box and rebuilding it because we are going to be rebuilding the entire shift box in here. So be excited for that. So next step is these two 13s right here. And then the two 13s underneath, and then the whole shift box comes right out. All right, so now we drop the uh, the shift box, slid it through. Now we're just gonna pull it out. Now I did something a little prematurely, so I want to show you guys what I did after I pulled this out. It's super vital to your success in this process to make your life a little easier. I guess, but if I can even get this out. Damn shifter stuck. There's one. There we go. Two. All right. <laughs> Awesome side. All right. So what I was talking about that's going to be useful for you later um, is I labeled the shifters um, front and back. And what I mean by that is how the bracket goes in. So there's a front and back. So front and back right there. Simple. Um, this just helps you... Uh, when you do your installation When you reinstall your shifter, you don't have to have the cable swapped um, It is a little confusing, but this will just give you a little bit of a I guess of a safety net So when you're reinstalling everything when you take everything apart and put it all back together Kind of gives you the ability to guess where everything goes correctly so um this is pretty much the entirety of the shift cable of your shift of your shifter system and we're going to rebuild uh the bottom 
the end and the whole box and we're for a bonus we're putting in a short shifter as well inside shifter box out and we showed you guys pretty much the basics and pulling it out now we're going to show you guys why we're doing this and what we're going to be doing number one this is the old style uh shift linkage uh the way that you know it's old style you'll see it has the round end and it uses a pin right here a ball pin just like that the new style or newer style from 2002 and a half and newer or 2002 and newer use these square ends like this okay now these are the newer style shift linkage and you'll notice on the actual shift tower right there it's got the same thing same with this guy right here now you can convert any of your five-speed o2j's to this style in comparison to the older one uh, the benefit here is that these are upgradable. You can mod them. You get added benefit with better shifting with the uh, the new bushings from Diesel Geek. Right there, there's Diesel Geek. Uh, we're also going to be adding a short shifter. This is probably the most common eBay slash Amazon short shifter you'll find out there. They're typically anywhere from like sixty to a hundred dollars on average. So. We're going to try it out. We're going to see what are the added benefits with this in comparison to the one that actually goes in. Because uh, you can get a short shifter pendulum. And these guys do make a difference. Um, but I want to use a stock one and try to go this route and see if there's an actual added benefit towards all of it. On top of that, we are rebuilding the shift tower with new bushings and hardware on there to add it uh, for the added effect. So let's uh, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to upgrade or modify is our one of uh, one of the actual shift linkage or end links. This guy. Now, uh, as per Diesel Geek, we have to rip out the center, and then once that's out, we're going to add the new upgraded bushing to it. Now these bushings are made of plastic, a super hard plastic. So that is the first upgrade we're going to be doing. So it's set of needle nose pliers. Go. grab our end link and it just says to grab inside and twist so that's out let's pull this bushing out yeah it's, it's there not that easy but it comes out there we go so you guys can see here that is the pretty much all the bushing removed and the center piece. There you go. Pretty simple. There's that plastic piece. And you only do it on one of your end links. These go in like this. They press in. Pretty snug. And that's it. That is your upgraded uh, mod here for the end link. Only on needed on one. So we'll leave that aside with the other guy here so those two are going to be left alone our next uh, part um, will be this guy right over here this guy is the shifter bushing that slides back and forth uh, this one is notorious for going bad because it's made out of plastic and there's a new one that they offer that's solid so this guy so you literally just pop off by just pulling back and it pops right off. Highly recommend cleaning this whole surface off before you install the new one.
nice and shiny. This is the brand new one offered by Diesel Geek. You'll notice a difference right here. We'll look really close. Huge difference. This one's just a solid, pretty much rectangle. And this has the little notches in it. So this guy is the upgrade. So pretty much you put it on and push in. Sucker's gonna be hard. There we go. So this is the replacement one that you need to get. Okay. Next is actually for this guy right here. Um, these are the ones that actually are on your shift tower. Um, you have replacement ones. Same thing from Diesel Geek. Now you do have to do the same thing. Is clean the surface as best you can. And all you do, slide this one up, oh, goes this way. This one goes this way, and then locks it in place. Now, I don't have it on the tower yet, but I'm putting them on here just to be ready uh, when we actually put this uh, bracket in the actual shift tower. So that's that aside. All right, for our next um, mod upgrade, um, it's gonna be over here on the shift tower next. So. This is the O2J shift tower, five speed uh, shift tower. And one thing you guys gotta learn about it is that how it's put together. It's super simple, but at the same time, it's very, very tight. Uh, it's a very, very tight fit on everything. Now, number one, the spring here. This spring right here is what holds the first gear or not the first gear, but the actual shifting um, rod right here. Now this guy, what this does is keeps it um, pretty much coming back, you see? That's what that spring does, is to help this go back into its location. So you have to remember the orientation of this spring. Um, it's not on here super tight, but it's, it's on there pretty snug. So that's super important first. And then next over here, you have this little clip for it okay that holds pretty much this assembly right here in place for you and then there's one two torxes right here that hold the top bushing in place this bushing um, is super vital uh, this car actually has a very 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 minimal worn uh, shifter and bushing uh, typically these right here are already rotting and falling apart so this one this car has been really really well taken care of um, so what we want to do to make life a little bit on the easier side we want to remove the bottom cover because that will give us access to the bottom and to the ca the shift cables themselves so when we actually get to disassembling the top portion of the shift box um, this will be much, much easier to take clips off and just unbolt and bolt back in. So around your shift tower, you have these little tiny little notches. Um, what you're going to do is grab a flathead, pull the rubber flat back, and pry left and right. And just repeat the process all the way around. Okay, so now that we got the bottom of the shift box removed, you'll see here there's a little clip here and a little clip here that hold the linkage in place for you. Um, just take them off. Pretty 
removing this linkage will benefit you um, just for what's it called peace of mind during the install process and remember the orientation uh, the cables the one with the metal end is the one that actually goes on the shift uh, the actual shift tower and then the one with the plastic end is what it goes right here um, you get to take out these little little clips right here fly head just like that Once you take it out, you can pull the entire cable assembly out. It's going to be a little tricky. This one you got to kind of push it straight down. There we go. And pull straight out. So set those cables aside, and now you have your shift box completely disassembled here on this side. Now, now we go back to the tower, and we go back to the top here, where we have to do the rest of the reconstruction on top. All right, we're back from lunch. <clears throat> so let's get back to the finishing this guy off. So the next step, now everything's been disassembled. Um, there's only one part of this uh, setup that I won't be able to use, and that's actually the bushings that we use for this guy right here for the spring. Um, the reason for this is because we're going with an aftermarket um, spring setup, so I'm not gonna benefit from it unfortunately but everything else we will benefit from on oh, all oh, and um, the first gear getter I won't be able to use that either so everything else though I will benefit from <laughs> um, so I might give those away to one of you guys out there if you guys want to get that for your shifter uh, we'll talk about that later but uh, now so we need to take off the two torques that are here uh, to disassemble this part there is a clip right here. You want to take that off. Now what that gives us the ability to is to slide this guy in and out a little bit more freely uh, when we're getting to the part when we get to the disassembly portion but just remember where that belongs because that's super important when you guys are going to put it all back in together okay so with the T20 <clears throat> I'm going to be taking off these two nuts right here or bolts I mean now this is what, what holds the um the bushing in uh, for the socket in place, for the shifter in place. These are pretty long, so be patient with them. And they go on pretty tight. these two are off now remember the orientation for these two for these two okay so it goes in like this not like this guys all right so the next step we have is actually pulling the shifter 
um, the shifter rod out. Now, remember how we talked about that spring that's right here? That spring is super vital uh, during the removal process. So, get yourself a nice little flathead screwdriver. Uh, it's gonna pull up. Kind of pull this guy up first and pull the bushing out. Bushing's gonna kind of a funky little ball. You gotta be careful because you don't want to damage the bottom of it. So it goes in and it kind of swoops underneath it. So just take your time when you pull these guys out. Um, save it, leave it on the side. Now that that's there, you'll see how everything's all now loosey goosey. You can pull this little spring off and then just pull and go straight up. Um, Obviously, we have to take off the shifter, the shifter boot. Um, so this goes straight down, and uh, it should go straight up. I'm sorry. There we go. So yeah, there you go. Now this shows you pretty much exactly um, what controls everything on here. So you have this guy right here. This is what your selector. Um, this is your ball. This right here is your first gear uh, starter. Um, we're replacing all of this with this guy right here. This is the short shifter setup. Um, so very, very, very similar in style in the installation. The only downside for this uh, setup is that um, to do the initial um, gear lock it's not an option anymore due to the fact that we don't have the actual locking mechanism for the gear which is kind of annoying um, so we're gonna see if we can do a couple little options here maybe um, I might be able to do the first gear getter um, modify this ball and use the first gear getter for this we don't know yet um, let's see if this can pop out and not be damaged Okay, so I was able to pop the little bushing out. I'm gonna see if the first gear getter fits in that. No, I'm see, not the same diameter. So we can't really use that. So we have to use this guy. Not a big deal. So what you want to do to start off your your process here, you want to take the shift knob off, take the spring off and take the, uh, the lock out. Next, during this process, you want to go straight down. Okay. Now remember the spring orientation that we talked about? That's super vital. This is just the, the one that goes on the bottom. And then this one goes on top. Now, what you want to do while this is all, any if you find any residual grease, slap it on to any of your new parts you want a little bit of grease on all your new parts um, on the parts that are going to be moving the most and be stationary mostly stationary in one spot um, 
the big job right here on this guy is getting that spring to stay up during your installation. So we're going to see if we can figure out a way to lock it in place. There we go. So we can lock it with a flathead screwdriver. Just like that. Okay? That way it doesn't fall down and become annoying. So, you're going to put this guide straight down and you want to slide this guy on top. So, I'll show you. So, this guy has to be on top and the little the, the, the gear has to be in the middle. Once you do that, you want to get the bottom. And there we go. There we go. Okay. So the other way around. I got the wrong spring on the wrong side. Let me get it back out. I flipped the springs around. Before I put the bushing in, I want you guys to see the orientation here. So you'll see here the spring is down below. So the right arm goes down below, the left arm stays on top. I actually had it right the first time. Um, and you need that so this sits like this. Um, so the next step is to get the, the bushing that goes, a little bushing cup that goes in here. This guy's kind of tricky, but it'll, it'll line up just like that. So, again, the reason why I, on other videos I've seen, they did this and then this, and it just looked a lot harder. This way, is it's, it's hands down a lot easier to do. Uh, get this guy lined up, pull this guy, to the right or towards you get the cup slide the cup down over and push it down simple 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 you guys can see now uh, that's it uh, now the next thing is since this is like not held together by anything we're gonna have to get it all tensioned up in just a moment but now the next step is to get the the new plate on and then we got new bushings um, for the inside of the car and for down here as well. All right, so we're down to the last bit of it. Now, I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm gonna keep it this way yet, but so there's a little locking pin here. Pretty much you line it up and you tap it in with the hammer, get it all the way down, kind of flush. Um, this is the reverse lockout pin. So this is where you have to this is where it locks this guy right here for us. Now there's a bushing and a uh, little um, little bushing and a nut that goes here. I don't know if it's required for a Mark Five, uh, a Mark Four setup, or is it for like Mark Five? So I haven't gotten to that point yet. But we put that in. Then we put our spring and our shift knob. Bring it down all low as you can go once you feel the snug. Okay, so that's going to give us the ability to.
first, second, third, fourth. I mean, <laughs> first, second, yeah, third, fourth, fifth. And then, as you can see, I can't go all the way over for a reverse until I push this up and then reverse. Now, the only thing I can see that might be an issue, reverse doesn't have a lockout um, where it keeps it there, like in like a normal car, you might have to uh, hold it to get it over there. So I'm not 100% sure yet uh, until we get to that point. But to me, it's already not the greatest uh, thing for that bushing, but we're gonna leave it in there for right now until we get to that point. I don't know again if it's needed or not, but we're gonna leave it in there. So that is pretty much the short shifter install. It's super easy. Um, a lot of the grease that I found underneath, I ended up uh, using it and just, uh, pretty much typing, pushing it in here so this has a very smooth uh, movement left and right. Um, I did that so we can have a kind of kind of have fresh grease on there but not really um, so make sure again you grease up the the new bushing for the short shifter and the bushing that goes in here grab some of the old grease and just cram it in there and let it you know do its job and get in there and lubricate stuff so that part is done um, I'm gonna take the short shifter knob off right now I don't want to damage it while I'm working on the rest of the stuff over here. The next stop, the next part of the uh, repair is down here, is our linkage. So on these guys, you have two different style of linkages. You have this guy, which is the one we use for the first gear and reverse over here. And then you have this guy for the rest of your gears. On uh, most Mark IVs, these are pretty much destroyed. They have a lot of slop. Uh, super cool thing, we got the ones, the new uh, refreshed ones that are solid from Diesel Geek. So that prevents all the slop from happening. So what we need to do is, is pull out these old bushings without damaging them and installing the new ones. So we're going to try first with some small set of needle nose pliers. Yep, and it pushes right out. Awesome. These are the old ones. Try to see if we can repeat the process over here. is a little bit trickier. There we go. Popped out both of them. Not bad. Just grab the corner with the needle nose and just push down and in. Just don't stab yourself. So those are removed and without damaging pretty much the actual ends. The next step is to install your new ones. Now there's this guy and there's two of these okay there are two different diameters based off um, pretty much what is used down here so you want to go and push this in and see if this has any slop if not that one's good and then check this one so they're almost identical let me see and try this again yeah they're both pretty much the same so you can use either option they might have shipped me two on accident it's a possibility check this one again okay so this one's higher this one sits lower I like this one this one fits better in here and I see that it fits closer to the edge so we're gonna install this cable first and slide it on just like that and then it uses one of these little clips that we took off earlier just like that now instead of having um, pretty much a rubber bushing it's a solid bushing inside here done um, next step here is to lock this cable in place with our one of our clips from the factory these guys 
just like that. The next one is the pretty much second through fourth gear or fifth gear. So this guy's a little different because he has a ball in versus a clip in. Um, so what we have to do is with our C-clip tool, we got to expand the clip, take this guy off. He goes all the way down. And then this guy goes in and then we put the clip on top. Just like that. He's a little tougher because um, he's a tighter fit. And then you gotta get this guy all the way to sit flat. Once you do, you put the C clip on and then you put your factory clip out on as on top of that. Give me a second here, my leg is going numb. All right, so we got the bushing in. You have to use two hands and squeeze as hard as you can. Next step is the C clip, which will probably go on kind of funky because it's not like really a normal position to put one of these in. Yeah, this is gonna. It's kind of weird. There's your C-clip. So the new um, Diesel Geek bushing, then the C-clip, and then you use your little retaining clip from the factory, just like that. And then same over here, pull out the old uh, factory bushing, put in the new Diesel Geek one, and then your retaining clip. All right, these pretty much are the repair to repair these bushings because you cannot actually find these bushings like normal online they're pain in the booty um but yeah and then last but not least put in your your cable here and then your locking clip just like that so now we've repaired the bottom with all new bushings uh, C-clip here for this guy and then on top we put a short shifter um, there's a there's a cool um, bushing that goes here called the first gear getter uh, we couldn't use it for this scenario unfortunately because this uh, short shifter has its own new bushing so unfortunately I can't show you guys that but it's super easy um, put your old factory short shifter back in push this in and pretty much uh, put the the end of the uh, the shifter right here this is it right here so this is what fails on these guys this rubber piece you pull that off pop this on and it goes on together and mates and you're done that is your first gear getter is what they call it um the last clip that needs to go back on is the one that we removed over here um we took it off just for uh, the ability to slide slide this forward and back a little bit more extra play put it back nothing else needs to be done there And now the shifter like has no slop whatsoever. It's really, really nice actually. <laughs> this is actually pretty hard. Um, so yeah, this thing definitely has uh, definitely no move or I mean it has movement, but the slop is non-existent. That's a that's a hard. That's a nice, definitely nice like shift there man i'm 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 actually impressed diesel geek made a really really cool product 
Um, after this, pretty much, um, again, this guy, this is what locks everything in place. Nothing crazy. So, reverse. And then obviously your first and second, and working your way third, fourth, and fifth. Pretty easy. So that's it for repairing your or reassembling your entire shifter box with new bushings, um, new short shifter. Uh, all, um, the bushings are off of Diesel Geek. The short shifter is from Amazon, eBay. Nothing expensive. Like again, anywhere from like sixty to ninety dollars for this uh, this guy. So huge huge upgrade though from factory you right off the bat without even having this connected to the transmission it's already very different feeling period like it's 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 interesting it's definitely very interesting in how this thing feels now um i'm actually pretty excited now to see the end results when this is actually in the trans on the transmission and when it's actually running so next step here is to rebuild not rebuild but repair this guy right here this is the shifter bracket uh, this is the bracket that goes the shift linkage bracket um, there's three bushings here I got two out of the three I ordered more um, but you use these guys right here these are the billet conversion pretty much for it um, pretty much all you have to do is separate top and bottom so pull out the metal insert And we do get this rubber bushing out of here. There we go. Okay. That is pretty much that part. And then there's the top and the bottom. So this is the bottom. And this is the top. And then put your bolts through and that's it. Gives you pretty much a solid bracket versus a rubberized bracket so no vibration um pretty much a more direct feel to the transmission a more sporty feel to your transmission this is a super cheap upgrade uh they're typically about 30 bucks uh 40 dollars pretty much at your door uh, with taxes and shipping so easy easy upgrade for anybody's uh mark 4 mark 5 shift linkage um again this just gets rid of the slop of a rubber bushing and giving you a billet part so that one's super easy to do the next one is the uh the transmission slider which we showed you earlier for the selector which is where do we put it where do we put it um because we have this guy Oh, here it is. So the next step is to put all our products in the car. So here we got the Diesel Geek solid bushing here for the selector. Uh, over here we have the new uh, Diesel Geek bushings for the actual uh, swinging portion of the selector. Um, so all that's going to be pretty much installed. The next step from there is to uh, install the new, well, the this is again this this is for a conversion guys we're not using the older style pin we're going to the slider style so we're converting it to that um so this you install this and this and then everything else so let's get to work all right so we're here now in the engine bay we installed the shifter box same process as before nothing crazy special um first things first we're going to install our shift bracket um so Remember, uh, right now I only have the two metal billet ones, so I'm gonna use them front and back, and not the middle one. But remember, there's a back to front um, bracket here uh, for the, the shift bracket, so you gotta remember that, because if you don't, you might end up putting the, the shifter bracket in the wrong spot and nothing will line up correctly. So first things first. Um, this one's labeled front. So for me, the front one is this guy right here. And this one is labeled back. So we're gonna slide these guys all the way. 
can get into their little home. What I'm going to do, since I have the, the rubber bushing in the middle, um, I'm going to leave that one bolted on ever so lightly. Just, just so I have something there to guide me. Now I'm going to put in the, the metal, the billet bushings. Again. You go bottom, then top, and then your bolt with the washer. And you guys can see that I'm not bolting them down. I'm just starting them. I don't want them bolted all the way down yet. Next step is to get the, um, the little clip that holds, the retaining clip that holds these guys in place correctly. And it's these clips right here. And they face towards you. These little clips face towards you, just so you know. So there we go. Now shift linkage is all pretty much the basic part is installed. The next step is to put our pendulum in, which is this guy up here, which is a 13. Our new sliding um, bushings here. These guys are always stuck in there, so let's see if we can slide them out in just a moment. Let me get the 13 for that. Now, all our shifter brackets, I know they're hard to tell, but there is a notch right there that's different than all the other ones. That's the li alignment tool, or the alignment for you. I am gonna end up cleaning this up and painting it, but just for right now, it's gonna look like this. Now there, your end link, you're going to push down and turn it to lock it. You see that? Slides on. And there's that guy. And then you put in your retaining clip. And then I got to go grab the other end link that belongs to this guy. I have right now is getting the bushing that's inside here out. There's one. There we go. Two. Pop in your new bushings. 
These fit a little bit firmer than the previous ones. Slide in your little guide here. Your retaining clip. And the last thing is your final end link with the upgraded Diesel Geek bushing inside as well. Come on. Slide on this end link. Okay, now, currently, right off the bat, uh, the gears are not going to go in correctly uh, because we pretty much disoriented the natural state that the cables were in. So I don't have a way to align this yet correctly until I actually, um, what's it called, uh, get it the car running. So currently, I don't have a way of showing you guys that. So I wish I have a better answer for you. Uh, but this is pretty much the state that it's going to be. This is the way it's going to look. Make sure you put in your retaining clips for this guy and this guy, and you're done. And obviously, everything else that you installed. Um, this pretty much gets rid of all the sloppy uh, shifting that you had to begin with uh, in your car. So let's head on over here to the engine bay. I mean, inside the inside the car, so you guys can see what I mean. You guys a closer look. Get my tripod all closed up. Okay. So there's the the gear, and so right now, first is kind of the furthest. It's not aligned right because it won't go in. Um, that's not a guarantee that that is the distance that's required to adjust it. You can go there and keep adjusting your cable. But unfortunately, since I don't have the factory little pinhole to align it to lock it and give you the right exact coordinates for first, I mean for second gear to get it lock in so you can get all the gears in the correct location, um, pretty much. I'm kind of stuck at this part where there's not much I can do in the sense of um, giving you guys the right uh, adjustment. So from here on with this shifter, and if you do all the modifications we just did for the conversion, you are going to have to manually adjust your linkage until all gears work correctly. And it's going to be a process. So please be forewarned right now, guys. It is going to be a process and a half to get your guys' car getting the gears to work and settle correctly but you'll get it it's not that hard um, just playing around with the linkage you know changing the distance uh, all around and eventually you'll get it but in general I mean that's really short gears if that's if that's what it's working like looking like which I'm actually really happy with the throw inside here so the next thing that we're going to develop here at Pinchal's Garage is that we're not going to use a factory center console. We're going to build a custom aluminum console that's going to be all part of this piece. It's going to look gorgeous. And so it's going to be a new product that we're going to be offering very soon. So bear with us on that one as well. Um, we got a lot of cool ideas coming down the, the pipeline here at Pinchal's Garage and stuff that I want to really, really uh, develop that no one else develops for these cars because these cars definitely deserve the love. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody on today's episode of Pinch Out's Garage for doing this DIY with us and definitely uh, having fun with it. And as always here at Pinch Out's Garage, we're gonna break, we're gonna fix, and we're gonna repeat. Peace out everyone and have a wonderful day.